Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage your Summit MC, Joint Center of Political and Economic Studies, Board of Governors Chair, Paul Thornell. Please give him a warm round of applause. Tell you what, if you are not up, uh, James Brown will get you up. Um, I kind of like this thing. You become board chair and then you get your own walk up song. And that's a good gig. Nobody ever told me that part of this. Uh, well, welcome. Uh, so thrilled you all are here. Uh, this is an amazing day that um, really I think is such a um, huge moment for the Joint Center um, and the ability that this organization, storied organization, has to bring people together and deliver some amazing content. Um, we envisioned this gathering, um, you know, about two years ago we were in the midst of planning for the 50th anniversary of the uh, Joint Center. And of course that was virtual and that is just not really the best way to convene and get people together and connect and think and do. Um, and so we kind of, although that was an amazing undertaking and, and, and really a great way to celebrate the great work and the tradition and the legacy, um, this idea for the day really kind of came about uh, recognizing what more we can do when we are in the room together. And so looking at the ways that um, we need to explore the current challenges facing black communities um, and think about the most innovative solutions for the future prosperity um, and well-being of black people in, in our community. Um, we're all here because we care about the direction of our country and we're all equally invested in the future of black communities. Uh, you understand the persistent and emerging barriers facing black Americans, uh, whether it's in the rural South or whether it's staffers on Capitol Hill. Uh, disparities in educational attainment, uh, disproportionate concentra concentration of black people in low paying jobs, and the difficulty in accessing basic services like broadband. We have a full agenda today because there is a lot that I just shared that we need to tackle and get after. I believe the Joint Center is at its best by delivering what we are doing today, high quality content at a convening like this. Um, I hope you all feel inspired by the end of it and energized by what I know will be thought provoking conversations. And I also hope you feel uh, that you're able to make new connections today in person uh, that we can all work together and build a future, uh, better future for black Americans in the entire country. Um, one thing I wanna just first call out is that these things don't just happen on its own. Okay, they don't just spontaneously generate. Um, on behalf of the Board of Governors of the Joint Center, I want to acknowledge the outstanding and amazing team of staff we have at the Joint Center. Uh, those staff members who I think all are in the room, if you, if, if you aren't, we acknowledge you. Those in the room, stand up and please be recognized. Stand up, come on, you know. We you get your James Brown walk up, stand up if you need to. Um, it has really been amazing, and going from hybrid to a little bit more in person, that by itself has been such an amazing challenge, and it is hard to maintain that team dynamic uh, virtually, um, and that's why I think it's especially critical to recognize that um, this would not have happened, not just today, but the organization as we know it today, without the amazing leadership of Joint Center President Spencer Overton. Um, his visionary approach to bringing this organization from a pretty bad state some years ago uh, to where we are today and to the path of amazing opportunity we have ahead of us is nothing short of extraordinary, I think. Um, he's led the Joint Center since 2015. He was on the board before that and has overseen really a period of extraordinary operational growth um, and really deepen the commitment to the rigor and excellence in our research uh, and policy work. Um, he's an inspiring leader, really, uh, and a friend, and who works tirelessly on behalf of black Americans in all communities. Uh, the announcement this week, as you all know, that Spencer will be stepping down next year uh, was um, certainly something that he had spent a lot of time giving thought to. Um, and, uh, you know, when he first told me that a couple days after I became board chair, my first thought was, well, you know, I need that about as much as I need to lose any more hair. Um, so I, I share that just to say that we're extraordinarily grateful, um, continue to look to him for leadership into next year as we make this transition. He's going to return full time 
to his profes professorial duties at GW, George Washington University Law School. Uh, and we will gather at a future appropriate time to celebrate him uh, and all that he's done and all he's gonna continue to do and all that the Joint Center is going to continue to be able to do because of him. Um, so I want you all to put your hands together and join me in welcoming our president, Spencer Overton. <laughs> Thank you so much, Paul, uh, for the kind introduction and also for your leadership of the Joint uh, Center. It's, it's certainly got a bright future. Last year, uh, Paul mentioned we celebrated our 50th anniversary uh, holding this, this virtual uh, summit. It's wonderful to be back in person this year and see so many colleagues, so many friends of the Joint Center. Uh, I echo Paul's thanks for your presence today, uh, both those of you who are in the room and those of you who are joining us virtually. I uh, have to also acknowledge my fellow Hamptonians here who came up uh, from Hampton University. Thank you very much. Um, so now, in the past couple of years, the Joint Center has continued to evolve in fulfilling its mission as America's black think tank. Uh, we've worked to advance black appointments in the Biden administration. Uh, we've published a seminal report on expanding uh, broadband in the black rural south. It you know, contained proposals that became law in the federal infrastructure law, and we work to ensure that southern states will fairly distribute those federal resources so that they reach the black rural south. Uh, we've published uh, research uh, on platform accountability so that tech platforms like Facebook, on one hand, preserve their authority to remove racist disinformation, but at the same time, they're not steering employment and housing ads toward white users and away from black users. Uh, we've published surveys of economic challenges that black communities uh, uh, face here, and we'll, we'll do more of that. So we'll, today we'll dig into a lot of those issues with our guests. I'm so excited, and, and you'll hear from her in a few minutes, that we'll have an opportunity to chat with CFTC Commissioner Kristen Johnson about funding black founders and black investors in crypto uh, here. Uh, we'll talk to NTIA Administrator Alan Davidson about equitable broadband deployment. I'm excited we'll have the EEOC Chair uh, Charlotte Burroughs imparting knowledge uh, to us on AI and discrimination and hiring and employment. Uh, we've got the Deputy Secretary of the Commerce Department, Don Graves, talking about their key initiatives. Uh, XM Bank President and Chair Rita Jo Lewis will talk to us about expanding access to capital for black businesses. So we've got these and many more thought leaders today. I have also got to acknowledge our sponsors, our wonderful sponsors, who made today uh, possible. Uh, our lead sponsor has been T-Mobile, Clint Odom, who's a, a former top staffer on the Hill and who is now at T-Mobile, has just been wonderful uh, to, to work with through the years. Uh, our underwriting sponsors include Google uh, and Chanel Hardy, who's on our board, uh, has been magnificent. Also, an underwriting sponsor is Comcast NBC Universal. Uh, again, another board member, uh, Tony Williams, who's just demonstrated uh, uh, incredible leadership on behalf of the Joint Center. Uh, I also want to thank our support sponsors, the W.K. Kellogg Foundation, Lyft, Charter Communications, the Annie E. Casey Foundation, American Express, the Business Roundtable, PayPal, Waymo, NCTA, Ariel Investments, and the Democracy Fund. So we're incredibly thankful for their support. We're also thankful for our esteemed speakers and panelists that you'll hear from today. We're thankful for LaJoy Plans for all of their hard work on this uh, event. Now, Paul mentioned that uh, you know, I came to the Joint Center in 2013 as a board member, and in February 2014, uh, I 
you know, became the chief executive of the organization. So, so you know, it'll be next year when, when I leave, a, a decade working at the Joint Center. I'll, I'll you know, get informal thanks later, but I, I definitely want to take this moment, acknowledge the leadership and support of Barbara Johnson, who has, has been board chair through almost all of my tenure, as well as our entire board. You heard from Paul. We've also got on the leadership team Paula Boyd and, and Ken Jones. Uh, also, several Joint Center alumni have been incredibly supportive, uh, including three presidents, Eddie Williams, Togo West, and Ralph Everett. I think we've got Ralph with us here today. Ralph, where are you? I hear Ralph uh, Everett. Thanks so much for being here, Ralph, and for your friendship. Uh, also want to thank Lynn English, Marlissa Hudson, and Renisha Best, and the entire English Hudson development team. They've been instrumental, not only in terms of pulling this event together, but in keeping us growing from a development standpoint uh, over the last several years. Also, I know I thank some foundations before, but I, I just do need to thank uh, some foundations who provided some transformational support for us at key moments over the last decade. Uh, I mentioned them before, but I'll mention them again. W.K. Kellogg Foundation, Hewlett Foundation, Democracy Fund, Annie E. Casey, Lumina, Robert Wood Johnson, Knight Foundation, MacArthur, and Rockefeller Foundation. Uh, like I said, they have been incredible to us. Uh, I also have to thank my entire family and acknowledge my mother, Meldred Overton, and sister, Cynthia Overton. Uh, could you all just quickly please stand here? Thank you all very much. And finally, you know, Paul had him stand, so I won't have him stand again. Uh, incredible Joint Center team. The work you all are doing just is making a huge difference uh, in the millions of lives of, of black folks in the United States. I'm proud to call you all my colleagues, my friends. Uh, as I think about leaving the Joint Center next year, you know, I know that this work is in good hands. Uh, Y'all, during uh, my time at the, the Joint Center, you know, our team has built an institution that transcends any one individual, and it will transcend time by effectively serving future generations of black Americans as they face new challenges. Uh, at its core, we are an organization that does top quality research that has an impact on black communities, right? That's what we do, that's our story, that's what distinguishes us, right? So for example, the research led by Dr. LaShonda Brinson on congressional staff diversity led to the creation and staffing of a, a U.S. House diversity office. The Senate Democrats, the, you know, the, the Democrats in the Senate adopting the Rooney Rule and also uh, uh, they disclose annually now their diversity uh, and um, they've had a 300% increase in black U.S. Senate top staff. So, you know, LaShonda, thank you so much for your work uh, here. Let's, you know. Another quick example, Dr. Alex Comerdell, you know, important workforce policy research. It has shaped federal workforce reauthorization legislation and it's shifted the future of work debates and other workforce policy discussions to actually include racial equity. Alex, thank you so much for your leadership. So the successes of Dr. Brinson, Dr. Comerdell, and, and then also uh, Joint Center President, uh, Vice President uh, of Policy, Jessica Fulton uh, here, who has just been outstanding in terms of being organized and not letting me jump off any cliffs here and keeping us disciplined here uh, and saying no uh, to me which is at critical times, which has been incredibly important. Uh, and, and all of our other team members, they illustrate that the Joint Center as an institution knows how to build impactful research programs that will shape the future of black communities, right? They have the formula and I know that they will build out great programs at the Joint Center uh, 
and, 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 and move even deeper into topics like tech platform regulation, data and AI, data and AI fairness, a tax policy, uh, black entrepreneurship. So I am so excited about the future of the Joint Center. I'm certainly excited about today. Thanks, thanks to you all for joining us.